Now again, this is written to Christians, uh, 1 John and chapter 3 and verse 13. Marvel not, my brethren, that means brothers and sisters in Christ, if the world hate you. We know, know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. We love our brothers and sisters in Christ. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. <coughs> Excuse me. So we pass from death unto life. The moment we put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we pass from death unto life. Now you might say, well, I'm alive. What's the problem? What, what makes you think I'm dead? See, God's estimation of life and death is a spiritual one. Now we have physical life and death and we have spiritual life and death. Physical life and death is when we've been born, obviously we've been born, that's the physical um, life. But, but actually I must add quickly, the moment we are conceived, the moment of conception is when our life starts you must be clear about that our life does not start when we're born so in reality if you want to be accurate the age that we are is always about nine months that's full term baby obviously about nine months more older than we really think we are sorry to disappoint you but that is the absolute truth i know that we take our birthday as when we come you know, out of our mother, but really speaking, that is not actually accurate. We are all about nine months older. Sorry to disappoint you. But anyway, the point is this, you and I have begun to exist only at the moment we were conceived. That is when you and I began to exist. Whereas our Lord Jesus Christ has always been there. He said, before Abraham was, I am. Now, there was a six months difference in age. I'm talking about human physical age between John the Baptist and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, John the Baptist was six months older, physically speaking. But the Lord Jesus Christ is eternal. And so he has always been there along with the Father and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. But you see, we have the Godhead or triunity, if you like. I know the word Trinity is not in the Bible. And that's where these um, different religious people say, ah, the word Trinity is not in the Bible, so therefore it's not true or whatever. But there are, there are many verses concerning the fact that there is the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit. Now the Father sent the Son to be the Saviour of the world and the Son sent the Holy Spirit for many reasons, but one of them is to bring, when we're talking about preaching the gospel, that's what I want to focus on now. He sent the Holy Spirit to bring conviction of sin, righteousness and judgment. So we need to come to a to a realization of our sinfulness before the Lord. And this is why we need a Savior. And we see that Savior fully provided by the Father in heaven. He provided the Savior in the person of Jesus Christ. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honour, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. So the Lord Jesus Christ died for each and every individual upon the, face, the whole face of the earth, whether they're man, woman, boy or girl. There is no one excluded. He doesn't want you to go down to hell. And that's why he sent the Lord Jesus Christ to be the sinless sacrifice that would die on the cross shed his precious blood for you and for me as a full payment, as the full payment for
for our sins. You see, there's nothing else that can pay for our sins apart from the precious blood of God's beloved Son. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, we know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God. Now, listen to this carefully. Because he, that is God, laid down his life for us. Now, this reminds us of the fact that the Lord Jesus Christ is God. It says here that God laid down his life for us. And so we need to understand the Lord Jesus Christ, he is God. God manifest in the flesh. In other words, putting it in simple terms, he is God in a body. He took upon himself sinless humanity. Here is the perfect man, the man that God intended you and I to be, absolutely free from sin, it, no even thought of sin, no evil thought, nothing could tempt him. You and I have a sinful nature. The heart of man is deceitful above all else and desperately wicked. Who can know it? The next verse says, I, the Lord, try the hearts. And so only the Lord knows the sinfulness of our hearts. And our hearts are desperately wicked. We don't even understand how evil we are in and of ourselves. That's why we need the righteousness of God to be able to enter into heaven. You see, we cannot enter into heaven with our sins upon us. They have got to be forgiven. And we've got to be given the righteousness of God. And that comes by putting our faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Yes, God laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Again, this is written to Christians, to believers. But whoso hath this world's good and seeth his brother have need and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? If we see our brother or sister in need, we should come to their rescue. We should provide that which they need, if we have it, obviously. Maybe we don't have it, but we can pray for them. But the people that actually have the goods or the money or whatever it is, the resource, resources that these other brothers and sisters in Christ have or, or have need of, well, then we can give it to them. And we can have fellowship in these things, helping each other as we live in this wicked world down here, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is going to redeem us from all corruption. He's going to change our bodies. Our bodies will be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, the last trump, that in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. What a wonderful time of... Um, reuniting with old ones we'll be reunited with the, sorry not old ones um, ones that have gone to heaven like ones that have passed away uh, and obviously their souls are up in heaven but then it's going to be a great time of reuniting to, to loved ones but mainly to see the Lord Jesus Christ for we shall see him we shall we shall be see him and be like him, for we shall see him as he is. What a wonderful time of rejoicing that will be when we see our Saviour face to face, the one who died for us upon the cross. 
Um, yes, my little children, uh, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and truth. It's easy to say, look, I love you, brother, my brother and sister in Christ, but do we really love them? If we did, we would come to their rescue when they have need. And this is what the believers should do. They should, you know, band together and come together and help each other and um, encourage one another as we see the day of his appearing uh, approaching. Yes, um, and hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. As I've said before, we don't keep the commandments of the Lord to get to heaven, but we keep the commandments uh, of the Lord as a result of being saved, as a result of coming to faith in Christ and becoming a child of God through faith alone in him. The good works that are done are not um, to obtain salvation, not to get salvation or to keep our salvation they rather, they rather come as a result of salvation. We must be um, concerned about doing good works. But that is not, as I said, to get us to heaven. It's as a, re as a result of our salvation so that people will look at us and see that we've been with the Lord Jesus Christ and they'd see that we love one another as brothers and sisters in Christ and be drawn to the Lord Jesus Christ for their salvation. That's the, that's the goal anyway. That's what we should be working towards. And not only we should preach the gospel, we should obviously live the gospel as well by the way we walk, the way we live in this present evil world. We must live different to the world, to those who are not saved, to those who are going down to hell by default. We were all going down there by default before. But some of us have come to know the Lord Jesus <coughs> as our Saviour. Now we're on our way to heaven. Praise the Lord for that. I hope you're on your way to heaven. But if you're not, that's why I'm preaching the gospel unto you, that you would put your faith in this crucified, buried and risen Lord Jesus Christ, the one that's exalted at God's right hand right now, waiting for you to make the right decision and come to him and put your faith alone in him. The one whom to know is life eternal. And whatsoever we ask, we shall re uh, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the Spirit which he hath given us. In other words, by the Holy Spirit, the presence of the Holy Spirit, whom God has give, given to those that have put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I said in an earlier lot of preaching that I did, the moment we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, we receive the Holy Spirit inside of our body that gives us the power to please God, that which we couldn't do by any way whatsoever apart from the power of the Holy Spirit. I hope you've understood this message. As I keep on saying, we're sinners in the sight of God, we need salvation. The Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross, shed his precious blood to pay for our sins. The way we take advantage of that and become children of God is by coming in repentance toward God, as I've said. Change your mind, agree with God that you are a sinner and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and God promises you everlasting life in whom we have redemption 
through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. I hope you've understood the message. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Um, if you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. Have a great night. God bless you.